It seems that some companies are forever changing their products, and others just improve on what they already have, very slowly. Jaguar is a good example of such a company. They've been slowly improving their XJS for 12 years now. And we tested the XJS last year, and we were impressed with its improvements. But we still long for their Cabriolet, a car that Jaguar's been promising since 1983. Well, it finally did arrive late last year, the first open-air Jaguar on the market since the last E-Type of 1974. The open-top version of the XJS is cause for celebration for any true Jaguar fan, even though it's not a true convertible. The Cabriolet uses interlocking hard roof panels for the area above the front seats. And when not in use, they stow in these handy pouches. The area behind the seats gets a traditional folding canvas top with a plastic back window. For 87, a removable hard top for this area is part of the package too. When down, the canvas top gets tucked under this boot cover. What's left over amounts to a roll bar and window frames. It may not be totally handsome, but it keeps the upper body of the Jaguar rigid. Reassembly is the reverse of removal, as they say. But buttoning things up seems more difficult. It's not the sort of thing you can do at an intersection while waiting for a light to change. But once the top is up, it doesn't leak, and its lines work very well with the XJS body, something even better than the hardtops. Because the Cabriolet's top is so rigid, there is no discernible flex in the lower body and the Cabriolet even returned a very quiet interior sound reading of 66 decibels top up. Top down, there is very little wind buffeting up to 60 miles per hour. All around, the XJS gives up little to become a Cabriolet. There's still plenty of space in the trunk, but the back seats, which were never really good for much anyway, are gone, replaced by two storage compartments and a parcel shelf. Elsewhere inside, the Cabriolet is unchanged from other XJSs. There's still leather and walnut everywhere. For the driver, getting in and out still means climbing up and over. But once you're in, support is good for normal driving. The seats, though, lack side support if fast quartering is your passion. The steering wheel telescopes only. Rake adjustment would help because of the low driving position. Instrumentation is complete, despite the odd vertical engine and fuel gauges. If you want something that looks more up-to-date, the standard trip computer should suffice. There are some new interior touches for 87. The Alpine stereo now has an extra 40 watts. And the climate control now has a revised semi-automatic control system. Everything under the hood remains the same, but that's nothing to criticize. The 5.3 liter V12 is as strong as ever, with 262 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque. It still looks complicated in there and is surely expensive to repair. But Jaguars are built better now than ever before and come with a 36-month, 36,000-mile warranty. With that engine, we managed a 0-60 to 60 sprint of 8.4 seconds. The quarter mile took almost twice as long at 16.4 with a terminal speed of 95 miles per hour, very fast on both counts. But there's much more to this Jaguar than just acceleration. You have to consider the way it accelerates. Thanks to the smooth power strokes of 12 small pistons, instead of four, six, or even eight bigger ones, you can barely tell the engine's running, even when it's working near its 7,000 RPM red line. As for the Jag suspension, there's also nothing new here, just our renewed respect for a car design that can provide an excellent ride and at the same time allow for road holding in the upper 10 percentile of all cars. And while the Jag is big and heavy, it feels less so in these maneuvers. In fact, you can even toss the Jag around by lifting off the throttle at the appropriate moment in a turn. If the XJS design falls down in any way, it's in braking. These days, most big expensive coupes, even Ford's Continental Mark 7, have anti-skid brakes as standard. The Jaguar doesn't. Stopping distances in our cabriolet, though, were very good, with an average of 116 feet and six stops from 55. But we did experience some premature lock from the right rear. On the outside, all XJSs get clear over color paint this year. Our only real visual complaint about the cabriolet is its add-on looking high-mounted stoplight. The EPA rates the JAG XJS cabriolet at 13 city, 17 highway, low enough for a $1,500 gas guzzler tax. We manage 16 on our mixed driving loop. Topping our list of hits, the Jag's exclusivity. 
there are no other cabriolets in the Jags class. And even at $44,850, no other car comes close to delivering what the XJS does for the money, which brings to mind the Jags' excellent combination of comfort and performance and good body rigidity that comes from the Jags' top design. On the miss side, the XJS is a bit dated. To keep up with the cars in its class, it needs anti-skid brakes. We hated the tacky look of the high-mounted stoplight, but we're divided on the Cabriolet's top-down appearance. As for safety matters, the Jaguar Cabriolet passes with halogen headlamps, radial tires, and stronger 5-mile-per-hour bumpers. It fails to have front passive restraints, and since it's a two-seater, rear shoulder belts don't apply. And they don't apply to this car either, a made-to-order true convertible version of the XJS. It's built in Cincinnati by Hess and Eisenhart, and it cost a mere $47,000. But Jaguar plans its own true British-made version, as well as technological advances for the XJS, derived from the new XJ6 sedan, maybe even anti-skid brakes. So Jaguar fans everywhere will have more than just wind in the face coming in the future.